Testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three, three, two, one. All right. Welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is KJV Exposed. That is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we look at each verse, break it down, bring it to life, and expose the meaning. Tonight we're going to begin a study in the book of Revelation. We've already done an introduction to that, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Apostle John before we get to Revelation chapter 1, which will be in our next episode. So as soon as I get that pulled up here, and we open up with the word of prayer, we will get started. Excuse me just a moment here. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull up the Bible study here if I can find it again. There we go. This will open up with the word of prayer, the Lord's Prayer. If you would, pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, once again, this is Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. The book of Revelation, the unveiling of Christ Jesus. And this is a little about the Apostle John. Before we go into the first chapter and verse Revelation chapter 1, I would like to acquaint you with the penman, John the Apostle. I believe that God himself is the author of the Bible. That includes the book of Revelation, as all writing in the Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, but the penman was the Apostle John. <clears throat> John was the beloved of Jesus. He and James were the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder. John was one of the younger of the disciples. He loved Jesus so much that John was known as the disciple of love. He would lay his head on Jesus' chest. He adored Jesus. It seems that Jesus felt the very same way about John. It was John that Jesus entrusted his mother to. Whenever three disciples went to side with Jesus, as they did at the Transfiguration, John was one of them. John was there at the Garden of Gethsemane, waiting while Jesus prayed. John loved Jesus so much that he was never very far from Jesus. It seemed that this great love that John had for Jesus, helped him to understand the person of Jesus more than any other disciple. In this book of John, it shows Jesus as God manifest in the flesh. The first few scriptures say, John chapter 1 verse 1 reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1 verse 2 reads, The same was in the beginning with God. John chapter 1 verse 3 reads, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now look at verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This gives no doubt that it was Jesus who made everything, including the earth, heavens, sun, moon, oceans, and he created man as seen in the first three scriptures of the Gospel of John. But verse 14 tells us that the Word, that is Jesus, Jesus is the Word, was made flesh and dwelt among us as the true Son of God. The four Gospels show Jesus as a lion, calf, man, and eagle. The eagle is symbolic of God. This is the message that John brought in his Gospel 
that Jesus was in fact God who took on the form of flesh and dwelt among us. The Apostle John knew Jesus better than any of the other disciples. He even knew him better than Paul knew him. There was something very special about John's relationship with Jesus. John's mother knew of this closeness and even asked Jesus for James and John to sit on his right and left hand in his kingdom. Jesus answered her and said that these positions were not his to give. John was the only disciple present at Jesus' crucifixion that the Bible mentions. John penned several books in the Bible besides Revelation. The Gospel of John and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John are written by him as well. 2nd John is even a mystery today. So much discussion surrounds this little book because no one knows for sure who it was addressed to. Was it, was it a woman that John knew from his age? Was it all women in general? Was it Christian ladies of all ages? Was it written to the church? Was it written for our day to some woman prophetically? Only John and God know. So many people are carried away with Paul's writings, and they are wonderful. But my favorite penman is John. John knew Jesus personally. He walked and talked with Jesus as he ministered here on the earth. John saw the miracles. He was there when Jesus taught the Sermon on the Mount. He had first-hand knowledge. Paul had a brief encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, but his other knowledge was by revelation. He was carried into heaven for a brief encounter as well, but most of his knowledge of Jesus came when he was three years in the wilderness studying and communing with God in prayer. Paul's writings are not to be diminished in any way, but John's writings seem to understand the purpose of Jesus' ministry more than anyone. He knew Jesus' mission. John understood that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice, that Jesus' blood would be sufficient to destroy death and sin. John knew that Jesus was God the Word. The Lord, in his three years of ministry here on the earth, seemed to be with Peter, James, and John even more than with any of the other disciples. The thing that really stands out is that John was so bold for Jesus that he was banished to the Isle of Patmos. John was so devoted, John was so devoted that even though there was no other one there, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Many writers think that John had been fasting for seven days when he received the information for Revelation. There is really no mention of this in the Bible, however. Just the name of the manuscript gets me excited. The revelation of John the Divine and the revelation of Jesus Christ our Lord. Given by John the Divine are just two names that this book took on in various Bibles. John was not just an ordinary man that walked the earth. He was one who had touched and felt physically and even emotionally the Lord Jesus. One of the unusual things about the book of Revelation is that it is the only book in the Bible that contains a promise to everyone that reads it and all that hear it will be abundantly blessed. The early church read the book of Revelation in its entirety every time they met. There is a curse spoken at the end of Revelation to anyone who tampers with the contents of the Bible. Some of the scriptures in this book were for John's time. Most of the scriptures in this book were for future events, especially the end of the Gentile age. The end of the world and the 1,000 year reign of Christ on the earth, then all of eternity in heaven. You will notice that the number seven, which means spiritually complete, is all through Revelation. We will also see in Revelation a restoration of to man of the blessings of the Garden of Eden in heaven. We will see again 
the tree of life and the water present. We will see access to the tree of life, which was lost in Genesis, restored in Revelation. The book itself says that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The chain of information came from the Father God to Jesus, then to Jesus' angel, then to John, and John was to write it down and give it to Jesus' servants. This book was probably penned around 96 AD. There is no proof of an absolute day. We must remember, and I stress again, that John was banished to the Isle of Patmos off the western coast of Asia Minor because of his boldness in speaking of Jesus Christ. He loved Jesus more than he feared punishment from the authorities. Alone, with no other believers to share with, John had been left out there to die. The authorities assumed that, was, that there was nothing he could do out there to promote this Jesus. How wrong they were. He wrote the book of Revelation, which would witness for him until the Lord returns. His witness is even stronger today than when he walked upon the earth. We must look at and understand the symbols we see to truly understand this book. Revelation is easily understood if the Holy Spirit of God reveals to us the symbols within. Revelation is not a horror story as many believe to the Christian. There are wonderful promises of a fantastic future. It is only a horror for those who have decided for all of eternity to refuse the free gift of salvation that Jesus offers to whosoever will. In many of the books, it is undetermined who says some of the things, Hebrews for example, but in Revelation, it is Jesus speaking, and he is the truth. Jesus not only knows the end from the beginning, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is nothing before him and nothing after him. Many people believe that the things in Revelation have already happened. Many others believe that the things in Revelation are not even real, that they are a vision, and we are not supposed to take it literally. There are others, and I am one of them, that believe it is current, happening now, and in the very near future. I really will not argue with anyone about any of this. All I can relay is what it means to me, and that is what I will attempt to do in this study with the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. In Revelation, it appears to me that our Lord is pulling the curtain aside and allowing us to see what He really is and what He expects from us. Many people call this the apocalypse, which means the revealing. Revelation is written in symbols so that people cannot understand with their mind but must have faith. So many things in the Bible are veiled to the non-believer. So many people look at the Bible literally, but to truly understand, we must understand it through the Spirit. The veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom when Jesus died on the cross. This signifies that Jesus has opened the way to the Father for us. God the Father is no longer unreachable. Jesus opened the way to him for us. Now we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. We need no other go-between. The Holy Spirit of God reveals the scriptures to the believer. He is our teacher and guide. There are so many ways to study the scriptures, such as types and shadows. This looks at the holy city as a type of the Lamb's wife. We look at these scriptures a dozen different ways. I believe in this study, God will reveal himself to us. Jesus in the scriptures calls himself the Alpha and Omega, as in Genesis and Revelation, the first and the last. He was promised in Genesis, and the fulfillment takes place in Revelation. We will see through this study, as we will throughout the entire Bible, that for every blessing God promises, 
there is a warning of curses if we do not follow the Lord. We will touch on the 144,000 which some denominations base their entire belief upon. This 144,000 are physical Israel. In my opinion, we will see also the large number of people around the throne in heaven when this 144,000 are here upon the earth. Those in heaven are the believers that are beyond number who have on white robes washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Revelation, as well as the whole Bible, is of no private interpretation. Revelation is not a horror story for the Christians. Revelation tells us of the wonderful provisions made for the believers. We read about the tree of life and the river of water which flows from the throne of God. What was shown to John in this vision is shown to all believers by John's written account. John makes us realize that not only did John speak the message God gave him, but actually describes God's very nature in Revelation. There's no question in my mind that this John is the very same who walked with Jesus. Revelation means the unveiling of divine mysteries. Christ is both the mystery and the revealer of the mystery. The revealer is God the Son. Read the following scriptures from the pen of John to better understand how well John knew Jesus. John was the only penman who called Jesus the Word and the Lamb. The name Word is in John chapter 1 verse 1 and we see Jesus as the Lamb of God in John chapter 1 verse 29, chapter 1 verse 36 and as the Lamb in Revelation chapter 7 verse 17, Revelation chapter 14 verse 10, Revelation chapter 15 verse 3, Revelation 19 verse 9, Revelation chapter 21 verse 22, uh, 21, uh, once again, verse 23, and in uh, chapter 22, verse 1. Also, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, there is a reference to a lamb referring to Christ. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it, by his angel unto his servant John. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation is both from Christ and about Christ. Since Christ is the revelation of God himself, look the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 18. God gave the revelation to Christ to be shown to John by means of an angel. That is a messenger. The word revelation, Greek up. Uh, Apocalypsis refers to an unveiling or exposure of God's program for the world through Christ. The prophecies of the book will occur shortly in the sense that the day of the Lord, the end of the age, may begin at any time following the rapture. This statement must be understood in accordance with God's perspective on time. Compare this with 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 4 and 8. The word signified Greek esamanon refers to the conveyance of truth by means of signs and symbols and refers to the vision described throughout the book. Symbols must be interpreted either from something in the context or from other scriptures. We start Revelation chapter 1 with not a theological trip but a spiritual journey into the future as we begin the study of the book of Revelation written by John the Apostle while imprisoned on the Isle of Patmos. John did not receive a dry, dead, theological explanation of future events. He received a powerful, dynamic, life-changing, prophetic revelation. He received a revelation of Christ in all his glory. He saw into the throne room of heaven and he received a supernatural unveiling of God's end time plan. It was so awesome that John fell down as though he were dead. The Greek word apocalypsis means to reveal or unveil that which is hidden. 
the term signified does not mean that this is a book of unknowable signs, but that God signified by the miraculous presence of the announcing angel that the message was from him. When apocalypse refers to a person, it means that person becomes clearly visible. Look at John chapter 1 verse 14. This revelation is a revealing of the mysteries of Jesus Christ. God the Father gives this message to Jesus. Jesus gives it to his personal angel. The angel gives the message to John, and John writes his message to all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. This message is given to John to encourage the Christians. These Christians should not be caught unaware. These things must come to pass because it is the will of the Father. God gave unto him as a reward for Christ's perfect submission and atonement. The Father now presented to him the great record of his future glory. Compare this with Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Readers, eavesdrop on the gift of this book from the Father to his Son. Soon, this word, compare chapter 2, verses 5 and 16. Chapter 3, verse 11, chapter 11, verse 14, chapter 22, verse 12, and 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 9. Soon, this word underscores the imminence of Christ's return. Angels are ministering spirits. This angel was Jesus' own personal angel who brought this message. Jesus means Savior. Christ means the Anointed One. Verses 2 and 3. Bear record, John was a witness of what he wrote. He saw the revelation and wrote what he saw. The blessing of verse 3 has a threefold condition. 1. Read the book. 2. Hear that is understand it. And 3. Keep it that is obey it. The essential nature of prophecy was the communication of new truth, divine revelation. God has given it to be obeyed, not simply to be discussed and debated. The time is at hand in the sense that nothing else now has to occur before the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation period. And this concludes our talk about the gospel, about the Apostle John, and we will pick up next time in Revelation chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. Once again, we're going to close out here with a word of prayer here in a few moments. If you want to see the Bible studies and devotionals in a written out form, they can be found on our website at www.emptycrossministries.com. If, uh, depending on the browser you're using, you may see three or four horizontal lines up in the right-hand corner. Click on that, and that will get you to uh, the devotionals and Bible studies. This, uh, the broadcast can also be found on that website, as well as on Empty Cross Ministries' Facebook page, Empty Cross Ministries' group Facebook page, as well as on my own personal Facebook page. So... With that said, let's close out here with the word of prayer. Once again, the Lord's Prayer. Pray with me again, if you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Folks, stay safe, be blessed, stay in the Word, and write the Word upon your heart. Until next time, and we will delve further into the book of Revelations chapter 1.